Now in this question then, what we've got is a brick that we put on a rough inclined plane. We place this brick, 0.5 kilograms then, at the top of the plane, say, and it's released from rest. So what we need to do is to mark that in that it started from rest, 0 meters per second. And then what happens? Well, we let go of the brick and it obviously starts to slide down the plane, gaining speed. So let's just catch it somewhere in the middle of its motion. It started off up here, gradually speeds up, it accelerates in other words, and so we'll just take it roughly somewhere in the middle of its motion. So we need to mark on here that it's been gaining speed, that it's accelerating. So if we mark in an acceleration arrow, a meters per second per second, we also need to mark in the forces that are acting on the brick. So we've got the weight of the brick. The weight of the brick normally would be mg, but we know the mass, it's 0.5 kilograms, so that's going to be 0.5 g. Don't forget the units, newtons. There's going to be a contact force, so there's going to be a reaction acting perpendicular to the plane at right angles. What can we call that? Well, I'm going to call it R, R newtons. Now, because this is a rough plane, there will be friction, opposing motion. The brick slides down the plane, so there'll be a force acting back up the plane, frictional force. Now, friction is often equal to mu Now friction is equal to mu r when an object is sliding, it's reached its maximum value. So this force in here will be mu r newtons. Now we're told that mu, let's just write it over here, we're given that mu is equal to a third. So in other words, this will be one third r newtons. So I'm going to just rub out that mu there and put that in then as one third r. It will save us time later on. So one third r newtons is the frictional force. Now that's the only forces then that are acting on the brick as it slides down the plane. What I would always do on plane problems is to draw a dotted line in here and this angle in here is always the angle of inclination of the plane to the horizontal. So this angle in here will be theta. I'd also set up a dotted line down the plane as well. So I've got a kind of cross situation here. We're also told that tan theta is equal to four thirds and that's very useful. Let's just mark this in that tan theta equals four thirds. Why is this useful? Well, what we can do is just consider a triangle that has sides in the ratio four to three. This is not an accurate sketch, but if this were theta, the opposite side over the adjacent is in the ratio four to three. So for every four units you rise here, this would be three units here. It means that by Pythagoras' theorem, we can find this side of the triangle, the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, square root of 25, which is 5. It's often known as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Why would I want to do this? Well, it will help us to get the value of cos theta sine theta, which usually occurs in problems like this, without actually having to find the angle theta. I'll show you as the question develops. So we need to find the acceleration. So I think we've got everything marked on. So I think we're ready to go. So we need to, first of all, establish what R is so that we can get the value of this frictional force. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is to resolve perpendicular to the plane, away from the plane as positive. So we're going to say that we're going to resolve away from the plane that direction is positive. So if we resolve 
away from the plane we've got all of R acting away from the plane so we've got R. The frictional force is perpendicular to this direction that's perpendicular to the plane so there's going to be a no effect coming from this force. Now this weight here 0.5 G Newtons is acting at an angle to the perpendicular direction so we just need the component in the to the plane here so that's going to be 0.5 G cos theta because it contains the angle between the force here and the dotted line so it's cosine when you include the angle so that one is going to be minus because it acts in the other direction to the arrow minus 0.5 G cos theta alright they're the only forces acting on the brick in the perpendicular direction to the plane and that force is equal to zero because there is no overall resultant force away from the plane or into the plane so that means that if we rearrange this R equals 0.5 G cos theta now what is cos theta? well we can see that cosine theta is always adjacent over hypotenuse so it would be 3 fifths so in other words we've got R equals 0.5 let's call 0.5 a half G times 3 fifths and that becomes 3 over 10 G 3, 3 G over 10 then so that's the value of R 3 tenths G Newtons you could work that out on your calculator but I'm just going to leave it in terms of G now what we need to do next is we need to think about resolving in the direction of motion that's down the plane so we'll resolve down the plane taking that as positive so we're going to look at the resultant force now down the plane and that resultant force because it's accelerating is going to be equal to mass times acceleration so what is the resultant force down the plane well we've got the component of the weight for instance acts down the plane that would be 0.5 G sine of the angle theta because we can split this into two components one perpendicular into the plane and one down the plane this one doesn't contain the angle so it is sine of the angle 0.5 G then sine theta we've also got a third R acting up the plane in the negative sense so that's going to be minus and all of this acts up the plane so that's going to be minus one third R but we know what R is it's three tenths G so I can write that in as three tenths G so it's one third R as for this force here R Newtons we don't need to include this because it is perpendicular to the way that we're resolving so this is the resultant force here and this resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration the mass is 0.5 kilograms and the acceleration is A so all we need to do now is just clean this up and solve for A so we've got 0.5 G sine theta well again I'm going to write 0.5 as a half so we've got a half G and we're multiplying it by sine theta sine theta is 4 over 5 opposite over hypotenuse so we've got 4 fifths there then we've got minus and here these two threes cancel out and we've got therefore 1 tenth G or G over 10 and that's equal to 0.5 A because I'm working with fractions I'm going to change 0.5 to a half okay half A what can I do now well we can cancel this 2 into the 4 and we get 2 fifths G 
I should have possibly left that as 4 actually. We would then have 4 tenths. 4 tenths g minus a tenth g is going to be 3 tenths g. So if I come down here, we've therefore got 3 tenths g is equal to a half a. So all I need to do now is times both sides by 2, and we end up with a being 2 lots of 3 tenths g, which is 6 tenths g, or 0.6 g. And then if you use your calculator, take g as 9.8, you should find that you get that the acceleration is equal to 5.88. And don't forget the units, meters per second per second. Okay, so there's our acceleration for the brick. And that now brings us to the end of this question.